I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about animation, sidebar transitions, icons, and more. Let's check it out. First up, there's this really amazing post about advanced animation paths. Now, if you've ever tried to do CSS animations and tried to animate something along a path or a curve, you know that it's pretty much impossible. It's very, very difficult to get that to look right. Don't say impossible, Nick. Nothing's impossible. You're right, and that's where this blog post comes in. Basically, you can create these advanced animation paths just like you see with this roller coaster demo on CodePen. Whoa, look at that. What? Basically, the way it works is you draw a path or a motion route, and you can do that as an SVG, and then you can use tween.js and basically step through each part of the path. So there's a pretty good illustration here of what this code is doing. Basically, it takes the current point and previous point, and over time, it will move an object along that SVG curve. So there's quite a lot of JavaScript here, but that's basically what it does. And you can create these really amazing curving animations like that. So if you want to view this on CodePen, you can do that or you can go to the Git repo and see exactly how this all works. That looks like a pretty fun roller coaster, got to say. It does. We should uh, go on it together. We should do that. Maybe get some cotton candy, ice cream afterwards. Make a day of it. Hmm. Sounds nice. Really spend some time together. Turn off our phones. Next up, we have a project called Velocity.js. Velocity.js is a drop-in replacement for jQuery's .animate function, which provides a lot better performance. Now, if we look at the site right here, um, you'll see a performance comparison. If we uh, look at this drop-down here, we've got jQuery and the number of elements right here. And then if we click on over to Velocity and start, you'll see that it is much smoother. So with Velocity, it's actually going very smoothly back and forth. This is actually kind of hypnotizing, but you can potentially see some jagginess as we're looking at the jQuery version. So the way that Velocity works is it's really just a drop-in replacement. Instead of calling .animate, you call .velocity. Now, the way that Velocity works is it uses request animation frame, and also it uses jQuery's effects queue to work on this. Now, there's a bunch of demos on here, but pretty much for the most part, it is a drop-in replacement. You just add Velocity to your project, change the instances of Animate with Velocity, and boom, you have better performance right off the bat. Now, you can find a link to Velocity in our show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash goattreehouse, or search for us in iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. Oh, and please rate us. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is this amazing post on the CodeDrops blog called Sidebar Transitions. So you're probably familiar with the sidebar off-canvas hamburger menus that come in on the left and right sides of the page. Well, these are transitions that basically make that look a lot fancier. So you can push the page or you can just slide in, but there's more advanced ones that use rotations and 3D effects. So you can rotate the whole page or you could do a 3D rotate in or rotate out. And there's also a few that will scale the page. I thought that was pretty interesting. And there's a couple other here. We'll just click through. Look at that. Pretty amazing. So if we head over to the Code Drops article, you can view the demo that we were just looking at, or you can download the source and see exactly how this works. It's just a basic combination of HTML and a few perspective, or excuse me, transforms and transitions. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have a couple of posts about icons that are free to download and use. The first set is called Feather, and this is, quote, a growing collection of beautifully simple icons, and you can get that in Photoshop, 
CSH, SVG, and web font format. Not a whole lot to say about this. It's just a, a bunch of different standard icons around here. Um, they're pretty minimalist and also pretty nice looking. So um, yeah, go ahead and download that if you need some icons for your project. It's MIT licensed, so you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. Very nice stuff. Well, speaking of icons, we've covered Iconic in the past, which is a paid icon set. You can use it for free if you're doing it for or using it for non-commercial purposes. But if you are using it for commercial purposes, you do need to pay for it. However, it just went open source, which means you can head over to GitHub and you can look at all the different files, including the SVGs that make up this icon set. So that's a pretty amazing change because it means that more people will be able to contribute to Iconic if they'd like to do so. And just to review, Iconic is just a very robust icon set. We'll uh, go back to the pro page here. It allows you to do a bunch of pretty amazing stuff. They scale the icons appropriately. Let's see, there it is. And you can color them individually. It's pretty awesome. So definitely be sure to check that out. And if you have a good idea for an icon, it's a good opportunity to get involved with open source. Can we get a, um, an icon of both of us? Like separate icons, not one, one Nick and Jason. I'm just going to move on. Next up, we have Google Web Fundamentals. Uh, Google put up a Web Fundamentals page, which is a handbook for best practices when making websites. Now, if you go through this book, it says a bunch of things that we have already talked about on the Treehouse Show at length. So they go into multi-device layouts with responsive web design. They go through fundamentals, patterns, navigation and action patterns. You know, you'll see a little bit about the app bar, tab bar, navigation, drawer, kind of like what we just went over, the Code Drops article. So basically, uh, if you watch the Treehouse show, you'll be, um, you know, set for the future, and the future is now, according to Google Web Fundamentals. Tomorrow is today. And yesterday is already gone. But make sure you catch up on every previous episode of the Treehouse Show, I think is the point there. Hmm. Anyway, go ahead and um, scroll through the book. Um, definitely read everything here. There's great sections on optimizing performance, uh, you know, the rendering path, and optimizing content efficiently. Um, anyway, just a ton of stuff on here. We can't go into everything. But for the most part, really, if you have been watching the Treehouse Show, we've already pointed you in this direction. Google is now solidifying it. So, Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a color picker. In fact, this is an 8-bit color picker, meaning there are just 256 colors in the palette. So if I click on one of these colors here, you can see that we get this nice color picker. And there's just 256 colors in this palette. So I can click one of these, and it will change the color. And over on the right side, I can see the hexadecimal value for this color as well. So this might be pretty nice if you maybe are building out a social network and you want users to be able to customize the colors on their homepage or something like that. You can go ahead and use this color picker to do that. And the nice thing is that it has no dependencies, not even jQuery. Wow. So you don't need to include anything else in order to get this color picker. You can just install it using Bower or Component if you prefer that. And then you create a div with the class 8-bit color picker and then call detect on the 8-bit color picker in your JavaScript. And voila, you get something like this. If we look at the documentation, here we have the 8-bit color picker constructor and you can send it an array of 256 strings in hexadecimal format if you would like to create a new color palette so you're not limited to the color palette that you see here. You can actually do something completely different if, say, you are in that situation I described. You're creating this social network. You want to have users customize their profile pages, and you want to limit them to specific colors that work with the rest of your design. You can do that. And if you don't want the colors to work with the rest of your design, you don't have to. I think we all remember MySpace. Mm -hmm. You can just leave it default and let people go to town on everything. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm really glad the web has come so far since mm -hmm. then. Next up, we have a JavaScript plugin called ICE. This is a really, really interesting 
plugin for anything that is content editable. Uh, this is from the New York Times, and it's really easy to explain with a demo. So here is you know a little little section right here. We can edit all of these different text fields here. So say I am writing things, and you'll see that it underlined that in blue. Now you can actually show and hide the different changes to the article here. So if I hide the changes, it shows you the actual current text, or you can show the changes and it'll show you what was crossed out, what was added, and when. Now what's interesting about this is it has multi-user support, so you can theoretically track all the changes to everything down to each individual user. Now, this works with anything that is content editable on the web, and it is really, really cool. It's super simple to use. You just create the tracker, and it works. You give it the element that you want to track changes to, and a current user object. In this case, it has an ID and a name associated with it. And then just call the start tracking function, and you're good to go. And it also supports plugins if you want to add those in as well. Anyway, really, really great plugin. Definitely useful if, for example, you are creating a content management system on the web and want to make sure that you can see who has changed what. Well, I think that's about all we have time for. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes where the Treehouse Show and don't forget to rate us. Also, if you'd like to try out Treehouse free for a month, use the link right in the show notes here. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com and use the free link in the show notes to get a free month. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.